Hello there. Uh, welcome to Grade 11 Geography. Uh, in this video, we want to look at the question paper of November 2023, and we are going to look at paper one. Uh, and uh, this question is on uh, under the topic of climate and weather. Uh, so uh, we are going to look at question 1.5 uh, in particular. So uh, this question that we have, and it reads, explain the negative uh, social impact that a drop in agricultural productivity we have on the people of Africa. And on the max section, we've got two by two, uh, giving a total of four marks. So what does it mean? It means we have to raise our two points, uh, each having uh, two marks. So uh, according to uh, uh, this question, uh, what is important is for you to interpret what actually does the question uh, uh, mean and what does the question uh, require. So, uh, But if you look back to the question, you would see that uh, it is uh, asking you to explain all the negative social impacts uh, that uh, will, uh, are being uh, caused by a drop in agricultural productivity. So um, basically, maybe we might want to uh, try to understand uh, exactly what we mean uh, by agriculture productivity. So uh, you'd see that agriculture productivity uh, is measured as the ratio of agricultural outputs to inputs. So uh, that is what we have. So the relationship that we have in terms of inputs uh, and outputs uh, uh, of uh, in terms of agriculture is what we mean by agricultural productivity. So in a way, we are saying, um, given a, a, a certain quantity of inputs, what outputs are being uh, deduced, are being achieved uh, by that by those inputs. So that's what we mean by agricultural productivity. So you'd see that also it is it, it is measured uh, in the form of market value of the final product. And it can be compared to many different types of inputs. Uh, so the inputs that we can uh, compare uh, to, uh, to the uh, final product that we are talking about, uh, we can have labor, we can have length and other inputs that we can also uh, that can also be applicable uh, in, a, in, in a way. So uh, this is what we have in terms of explanation of agricultural productivity. So um, going back to our question now, uh, we want to now to uh, raise those uh, negative social impact, but you would see that uh, this question also is emphasizing or is relating uh, to the people of Africa. And we know that uh, in Africa, many countries are developing countries. So um, you'd see that in developing countries, uh, the, we, we don't have uh, much concentration in, in, in terms of the manufacturing industry. They rely much on the agricultural sector. So if the agriculture, agriculture sector is, is affected, it's going to uh, have uh, many negative impacts in the economy because many people rely on the agriculture sector. And, are, and we would see that in developing countries, we see many people, a larger proportion of the people in the country living in the rural area. So uh, that is going to be a, a cause a great uh, 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 negative impact that we uh, we can notice. So um, these are some of the uh, 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 points that we have according to this question. Let's try to look at the first one, which is saying um, uh, the one one of the so, uh, negative uh, impacts is that smaller harvest, especially in staple crops, would lead to widespread uh, uh, famine or malnutrition. So uh, Obviously, we are saying that uh, the bulk of the food that is being eaten by the people in, in, in African countries is agricultural uh, uh, agricultural food. So uh, we are going to see that we are going to notice uh, 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 the people of the country are, are, are facing uh, malnutrition. Uh, so malnutrition uh, basically is the lack of uh, eating the balanced diet. So this is going to obviously affect uh, the people of the country. So this is what we have in terms of the first point. And then the second point uh, uh, is one of the neg negatives. Uh, we can also um, there would be widespread poverty and death, which is actually associated uh, with the uh, hardships that are coming out from low, low productivity that is coming out from the agriculture sector. We are saying uh, uh, the greater part of the bread, uh, of the food basket is coming from the agricultural sector. So if it's affected, obviously uh, it is going to lead to poverty. So um, also uh, we would say that many people uh, are working again in farms. So uh, when this agriculture sector is uh, 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 affected, it means that they're not going to work, they're going to be unemployed, and this is going to lead also to poverty. So um, next point that we have is that, is that there would be job losses in farming and industry, which is a, a, which is a, a, another point that is emanating from the, uh, the, the earlier point that we've discussed of widespread poverty and death. Then uh, the next point is that it would result in migration of people from rural to urban areas. So we are going to need not, uh, notice a high a high movement of uh, people from the rural areas uh, to the urban areas because uh, in the rural areas there are no, there is no more production in terms of uh, uh, since the, the the productivity has gone down so people are now looking for greener pastures they are going, they are going to town and when we have a, a high influx into urban areas of people it's also going to uh, cause some problems high criminal activity in the urban areas because many people are, un are unemployed so this is what we have then we go to um, the last point that we have. Uh, people would move to the country to to the countries creating 
conflicts. They move to other countries, uh, uh, creating conflict. So you would see that people will move out of the country. Since since they, they, they are now unemployed, they are going to look for greener pastures even out of the country. So when they go there, uh, we are going to see uh, some conflicts that are going to emanate uh, from that uh, uh, movement that is going to happen. So, uh, we, have got, we have noticed uh, the, the, the existence of xenophobia. This is uh, caused by some of these uh, uh, factors. So this is what we have in terms of uh, the first question that we are, we are going to look according to this video, which is 1.5.5. 1. 1. Then uh, we, are, we also have another question that we want to look is uh, uh, to look at it uh, within the context of uh, this video. We go to question 1.5.6. Uh, uh, that's uh, what we have according to the question paper that we are talking about. Uh, that is November 2023. So um, 1.5.6 reads, uh, suggest measure, uh, measure that could implement to reduce the spread uh, the spread of uh, uh, desertification. So, uh, so uh, this question is asking for measures that could uh, imp uh, that could implement uh, that could be implemented to reduce the spread of uh, desertification. So, um, desertification, uh, desertification also is a term that we, may, we might also need to understand before uh, we start to answer the question. So, let's just uh, try to to see what actually uh, do we mean uh, by desertification. So, um. Desertification, uh, in uh, on on its own, uh, we we understand it as the process by which a natural uh, or human causes reduce the biological productivity of dry lands. So the dry lands that we are talking about, uh, we are talking about the arid and semi-arid lands. So um, we would see that uh, in this definition, we are seeing that there is a reduction in the pro in, in the biological productivity of of of, of dry lands. So you would see that this decline in productivity may be the result of, uh, uh, it may be caused by uh, one, uh, it might be climate change causing the reduction in uh, biological productivity, or we might have deforestation causing a reduction in, in biological productivity, or we might have overgrazing uh, that is transpiring, uh, causing that uh, reduction in, in biological productivity, or uh, it can be a combination of all, all, all the other factors, or even political instability again, can also cause a reduction in biological uh, productivity. So biological productivity uh, uh, is being reduced. So the, uh, the, the, the fact that we are having uh, biological productivity are being reduced is uh, what is uh, causing uh, the, uh, the process of uh, desertification. So this is what we have in terms of uh, uh, the explanation that we have in terms of desertification. Uh, so, so you would see that uh, the immediate cause of desertification is the loss of most uh, vegetation. So whenever there's uh, desertification, we have, uh, there's going to be loss of vegeta uh, vegetation. And this is driven by a number of factors such as drought, uh, even climate shifts. Uh, we, we can have overgrazing, uh, deforestation, uh, or uh, even uh, we can have uh, the, 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 the effect of construction materials. So uh, this is what we have in terms of um, uh, uh, the the explanation again of a uh, uh, desertification. So uh, further on, you can see that this concept of desertification uh, does not only refer to physical expansion of the, of uh, existing deserts, but uh, rather it can also uh, apply to to various processes that threaten all dryland ecosystems, including our uh, deserts as well as grasslands. So this is um, uh, what we have. So um, if you go back to our question now. Uh, our question is saying, I uh, suggest measures that could be implemented to reduce uh, the spread of de uh, desertification. And this question is put a uh, six a uh, max, and obviously it needs you to raise at uh, three points. So um, one of the measures that could be implemented to reduce the spread of desertification, uh, we can have, uh, we can practice a, a crop rotation. So um, uh, uh, going back to desertification, we see that uh, one of the main activators uh, that is going to lead to desertification is the issue of, of, of soil raising. So, so whatever measure that we are going to raise here is a measure that is going to uh, reduce or uh, is going to prevent uh, the the issue of of, of soil erosion. Because soil erosion is one of is, is one of the major activators of desertification. So, if you practice crop rotation, you are going to see that um, uh, we are going to have a reduction uh, uh, or or the probability of us having the uh, desertification is going to be uh, reduced. So, or maybe you might want to understand what we mean by uh, crop rotation. So you see that crop rotation involves growing various plants in a set order on the same land. So we are growing uh, various uh, plants, but on the same land. So it means uh, periodically we are changing uh, the crop that we are growing and putting another after a certain period. That is what you call by crop rotation. Uh, so you'd see that crop rotation is the opposite of uh, monocropping. Monocropping, we are saying we are growing the same uh, crop at the same land for a longer period of time. But when it comes to uh, crop rotation, it becomes the opposite. We are saying we are growing various crops in the same land. So this is what we have by um, uh, crop rotation. So there are many positives that you can deduce from crop rotation. 
Uh, so we are going to see that uh, after the application of soil rotation or the implementing of soil rotation, we are going to have a greater soil fertility. Uh, we, we are also going to notice fewer pests and, and crop diseases uh, at that land that we are uh, engaging crop rotation. And also at the end of the day, we, we will notice higher yields. So this is uh, what we have in terms of um, crop rotation. So um, at the end of it, again, you'd see that all these um, uh, uh, benefits or advantages that we are deducing from crop rotation are also going to lead to, uh, to, to, to prevention of soil erosion, of which soil erosion is the major activator that we are talking about uh, that is going to lead to what? To de desertification. Also, decrease in pollu pollution also is going to be noticed uh, from uh, uh, the issue of uh, implementation of crop, crop rotation. Uh, so um, this is what we have. So um, we, we can now go back to our question and try to see in terms of uh, measures that we could implement uh, to reduce the spread of desertification. We, uh, we, we, we have raised the issue of uh, crop rotation as one of them. And then you can also issue, uh, uh, implement the issue, of, the, the issue of planting of trees. So planting of trees also is a major, major factor that can uh, lead us to uh, uh, reduce uh, the uh, probability of us having uh, desertification. And also you can also, uh, also engage the use of uh, organic fertilizers so um, on the issue of organic fertilizers, we are going to see that uh, we are going to notice that we are going to have some benefits by uh, by using organic fertilizers like uh, healthier, healthier soils. We are going to have healthier soils when we are uh, when we, when we use organic fertilizers, and the soil will become more fertile. So um, also the use of organic fertilizers also is environmentally friendly. So this is uh, what how we can uh, uh, support the use of um, uh, organic fertilizer. So. Uh, the next one that we have uh, is uh, to practice contour apply plowing, uh, which is which at the end of the day again will reduce soil erosion. So you'd see that all the points that we are raising are going to uh, reduce the issue of uh, soil erosion, which is going to uh, uh, enhance uh, the prevention of de de desertification. So this is what we have. You'll see that a contour apply plowing also conserves soil and water, which is a very uh, positive uh, that is going to uh, 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 lead us to uh, maybe to prevent uh, the issue of uh, desertification. So this is uh, what we have. So um, next one, uh, we are we are going to have the issue of uh, um, plant uh, to of planting ground covers. So uh, uh, the issue of planting ground covers is uh, when 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 we are engaging any plant that grows lower lower the ground. When uh, those crops that grows uh, lower the ground, they are going to uh, uh, enhance uh, the uh, the strength of soil underground. That is going to reduce the issue of uh, soil erosion again. So you'd see that this is that this that is why we are going we are implementing the issue of uh, ground cover. Then the last point that we have is allowing land to 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 lie fallow. And when we are saying land is lying fallow, we are we are saying we are not using for a certain period of time. We are leaving we are we are leaving the land for a period without without being uh, uh, utilized. So by li leaving the land idle uh, during the process, we are uh, we are reducing the issue of soil erosion again. Uh, so this is what we have. So in other words, we are saying uh, no action is being taken on the land. It's being left unproductive. We are not utilizing it for a certain period of time so that it's not affected uh, by the negatives uh, like a uh, soil erosion. So this is what we have uh, on uh, the last point that is allowing land to lie fallow. So uh, this is what we have, guys, about this video. Let's stay tuned for more videos to come. Let's subscribe and share. We are still coming as we prepare for exams. Let's share the link uh, to our friends and... Uh, Encourage them to subscribe and turn on the notification button as we uh, bring more questions, uh, more revision questions that will assist us in the exam to come. I'm signing out. We'll meet again in the next video.